One of the most outstanding vehicles that Ukraine received from its Western partners is the 40-year-old Bradley. The IFE proved to be well-suited to Ukrainian combat conditions and thanks to its protection against drones, mines and anti-tank weapons, it has become a cult favorite for the Ukrainian armed forces. The Wall Street Journal reports that the U.S. has sent more than 300 Bradleys since Russia invaded Ukraine in early 2022. Despite their age and condition, some vehicles had to be refitted. They have performed admirably, saving the lives of Ukrainian troops. The Bradley weighs nearly 28 tons, requires a crew of three, but can carry six soldiers and is armed with a 25mm cannon and often an anti-tank missile launcher. The maneuverability of the Bradley and some other IFVs is valuable in warfare, where vehicles can be identified and destroyed in minutes by drones. Vehicles like the Bradley are useful in both offensive and defensive operations. Many Bradleys in Ukraine have been damaged or destroyed. For example, about 65% of Ukraine's Bradley fleet was out of action in May, according to a Ukrainian government report. Many have been repaired and returned to the front lines. Ukrainian mechanics often prefer older vehicles to more sophisticated modern ones because they are easier to repair at a time when equipment is in short supply. The Pentagon is trying to find a replacement for the Bradley that would be lighter, have more firepower and be better protected than the armored personnel carriers given to Ukraine. Experts note that a big difference in the new vehicles will be the so-called open systems architecture in which everything is built on a modular principle so that software and hardware, from guns to engines, are easily replaced and upgraded. At the moment, it takes three to five years to update and upgrade the Bradley and the US Army wants this period to be a little more than a year. The U.S. continues to operate one Bradley unit, which will undergo modernization. In particular, the IFV will be equipped with the Israeli-made Iron Fist defense system, which fires small explosive devices when a threat from the air is detected. Incidentally, Ukrainian Bradleys are already equipped with electronic warfare systems. In late January 2023, it was reported that Washington had sent the first batch of these combat vehicles to Kiev. In total, Ukraine received 300 Bradleys, of which it lost at least 90. In June of this year, the instructor of the 1st Battalion of the 47th Magura Brigade of the Ukrainian Army, Oleg Shaus, call sign Azimuth, said that for the Russian invaders at the front, the Bradley is a very tasty morsel, and they are hunting for these vehicles. With more Western support, a greater focus on mobilization, expanding the defense industry and building fortifications, Ukraine will not only be able to continue to hold its ground, but will also be able to create the conditions for counter-offensives in 2025, wrote Max Boot, a Washington Post columnist and senior fellow at the Council on Foreign Relations, in his column. We have difficult months ahead as Ukraine struggles to hold its front lines and rebuild its shattered energy infrastructure. The West must show that it will not waver in its support. Ukrainians who have borne the brunt of this terrible conflict certainly will not, the author noted, commenting on Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky's new visit to the United States. Boot emphasized that given the changing fortunes at the front, Ukraine is forced to contend with a possible reduction in foreign support. It took months of delays for Congress to approve a $61 billion aid package for Ukraine in April. That money will run out by the end of the year and there is no guarantee that Congress will approve another large package. Ukraine could be in a particularly dire situation if former President Donald Trump wins. Trump, in his only debate with Vice President Kamala Harris, rejected a call to declare his support for a Ukrainian victory in the war, the columnist noted. He added that President Joe Biden should give Zelensky permission to use Western weapons systems to hit military targets deep inside Russia, citing the American-made ATACMS missiles previously provided to Ukraine. Let us recall that The Telegraph previously wrote that the Ukrainian armed forces could launch a counter-offensive in 2025. It was noted that it is quite likely that the Ukrainian offensive in the Kursk region of the Russian Federation is aimed at forcing Russia, at least partially, to divert troops from the offensive in Donbass. American officials suggest that Russian troops have already been partially withdrawn from Crimea, Kherson and Zaporizhia oblasts and may be redirected through the occupied Donetsk and Luhansk oblasts to counter the Ukrainian Armed Forces Kursk offensive. Ukrainian sources also report that Russian troops may be withdrawn from the Kharkiv front. Over
Over the last few months of this year, aircraft of the Russian Occupation Army have dropped almost 130 high-explosive bombs on Russian territory and occupied Ukrainian lands. According to Astra, one of them was discovered in the Belgorod region on September the 23rd. In the Grivoronsky urban district, a few kilometers from the village of Dobroy Vanovka, a Fab 250 was discovered. There were no casualties or damage. The munition has already been destroyed. This is at least the 127th aerial bomb dropped by the Russian Aerospace Forces on Russia and the occupied territories of Ukraine from March to September of this year. The resource writes, It is noted that earlier the Russian army began to equip Soviet high-explosive aerial bombs with UMPK complexes, universal planning and correction modules. After this upgrade, wings and satellite guidance appear on the FABs, allowing them to be launched directly from the territory of the Russian Federation. The exact reasons for the unplanned descent of the bombs are still unknown, but it has existed since the beginning of the use of UMPK, which turns their freefall into gliding. It is known that the occupiers are launching at Ukraine, including the winged FAB-3000. The numbers in the name indicate the total weight of the product in the FAB 3000, about half the weight is explosives. The Russian army began actively using the UMPK in the spring of this year, and the problem of the updated FAB was immediately revealed. Often, the bombs simply do not reach Ukraine. Most often, the FAB 250 and the FAB 500 fall. Usually, in the event of an abnormal collision, they do not explode. The bombs are destroyed after the fact by explosive ordnance experts. The publication says, In early July, a FAB 3000 fell from a Russian plane onto the Belgorod region for the first time. The bomb exploded in a field near the village of Shebekino. Since the area was deserted, there were no casualties. On May the 4th, a Russian plane dropped a FAB 500 on Belgorod, as a result of which seven people were injured, 31 houses and 10 cars were damaged. The authorities concealed the reason for the bomb's fall, as well as the fact that it was Russian. Astra emphasizes, Let us recall that Russian occupation forces quite often lose bombs over their own cities. For example, on the evening of June the 13th, 2024, a powerful explosion thundered in Shebekino, Belgorod region. It was reported that a Russian aerial bomb fell on the city. Local telegram channels asked residents of Titovka, a suburb of Shebekino, to refrain from walking until the morning. In Shebekino itself, the blast wave tore out window frames and smashed glass.